And the uh, bigger story of the week was obviously uh, same-sex marriage. We got the results of the marriage survey. Now, I'm actually uh, glad for once to be able to talk about this issue, mainly because uh, of the fact that it's now finally resolved and it actually is a bit of a break from talking about the citizenship saga, which is just ongoing and getting more bizarre by the week. Yeah, well, the citizenship saga uh, is a nuanced debate, very interesting. Uh, John Alexander just found out today that he didn't even have to renounce, but um, certainly good uh, to get this marriage survey over and done with. Uh, many complexities, many nuances to it, and obviously one of the interesting things here, Tim, is uh, Labor electorates, Tony Burke's electorate, electorate, you know, resoundingly voting no, uh, and then these Labor MPs aren't going to respect their constituency in the House. So. That's just uh, another interesting update in this story. Yes, and we'll get to that uh, soon. Uh, but let's have a look at the actual figures. So uh, there was uh, yes responses. There were 7.8 million, which was 61.6% uh, .6 of the total vote, and no responses were 38.4%, which were uh, 4. Uh, 8 million, and the uh, survey had a 79% uh, uh, participation rate. So even though it's a voluntary uh, survey, we don't often have voluntary uh, votes in Australia, it was clear that uh, the Australian people wanted to have their say uh, on the issue, and it was uh, a decisive result for uh, the yes vote. Uh, nobody can really dispute that, and as we mentioned, it it finally uh, resolves the issue and it also proves the the vote uh, was a success. I mean, I, uh, before this vote was called, uh, you know, people on the left were saying that, you know, oh, you know, people wouldn't vote in it or oh, young people don't know what a post uh, box is. It's, you know, going to be a flop or oh, it's, uh, you know, rigged to, to fail. But, you know, look at the the the, the turnout uh, and the result. I mean, you know, the, the left, they were, you know, so, you know, pessimistic, but they've now, you know, got what they wanted. I mean, uh, same-sex marriage is going to be introduced. Uh, to, uh, Malcolm Turnbull uh, has promised to pass it before Christmas. So they seem to be all quite happy now where they actually fought this process every step of the way and did their best to make sure that this day didn't happen where, uh, you know, there, there was, uh, as people said, a, a, a big, you know, national hug. Well, the results are uh, as to what one would expect. Uh, countless news polls in the Australian indicated the 60-40 split roughly we're talking about here. It was nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, but obviously there, you know, are some concerns with this vote. For me, par paramount is religious freedom. As a Christian, uh, I want my uh, religious views to be protected. I don't want a rerun of what happened with the uh, Tasmanian Archbishop being thrown, you know, in front of anti-discrimination commissions or what have you. Uh, it is a resounding uh, result, but there is still a lot to, uh, to talk about. There are still a, a lot of ramifications to unfold uh, in this debate. And, you know, I'm slightly critical of this uh, voluntary vote. I look back to the uh, Republican debate of 1999, and now if 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 you were voting in that referendum, if you had any doubt or any cast of a shadow of a doubt in your mind, you'd vote no. We've also got a 20% of uh, people, 20% uh, swab of people abstaining from voting or just not voting at all, and that that to me, although you know 79% of people, it is a high turnout for a voluntary postal vote. But still, 20% of people abstaining. Uh, if, if it was a mandatory vote, I think a lot of them uh, could have voted no because I think a lot of people didn't vote because they were really, really turned off by the intimidation of the far left LGBTI activists uh, that took part in thug like behaviour, blowing up the Christian lobby, headbutting Tony Abbott, but ultimately, the message that George Brandis and Pine and, and many others pushed across, the question is, this is not about left-wing violence, this is not about safe schools, but this question is about redefining the Marriage Act. Now, I'm not for this, but I think many people understood that this issue 
uh, in their eyes, was just about redefining the Marriage Act. And I think that is why it was so uh, successful. And moreover, I think it was because so many people are sick and tired of hearing about this. There are so many more problems uh, that are much, much more important uh, to us as a society uh, than if two men should be able to hook up. We have a massive national debt. We have an awful education system and our infrastructure is crumbling. And, and quite frankly, I'm glad that this is over and I hope it's taken uh, care of before Christmas. Well, you mentioned your concerns about uh, religious uh, protections and uh, a few days before the uh, results were announced, we uh, saw an alternative uh, bill, because obviously the Dean Smith bill, which is a very uh, basic bill that offers uh, only protection for religious ministers and celebrants. There was a bill proposed by uh, Liberal Senator James Patterson, which uh, made sure that not only was uh, religious freedom protected, but freedom of conscience, uh, free speech, and also uh, parental rights. But uh, in the afternoon, after the uh, results were announced, uh, James Patterson said that you know that bill was. Uh, not going to be introduced and he was going to work on amendments to the Dean Smith bill. And it's really been interesting to note that the Conservative, uh, I mean, it was predicted that there'd be this, you know, uh, another massive showdown in the Liberal Party room when uh, on what form the same-sex marriage legislation would take. But I've, I've noticed over the far, past few days, the Conservative uh, you know, opposition to, um, or, or, or should I say, uh, the push for religious protections has all but evaporated. Uh, you know, uh, Matthias Coleman, uh, Peter Dutton have said, well, you know, we, we, we just want, you know, protections for, you know, religious ministers and, you know, f uh, free speech. We've got to make sure this is done by Christmas. And in fact, uh, uh, there was a story that Peter Dutton and Scott Morrison have said, oh, we just want to get the legislation passed uh, by Christmas and we'll worry about the religious protections later. It really seems like they've just thrown in the towel and said, okay, we'll just, you know, pass that. We, you know, we're even worry about these other things. Well, uh, John Howard, great Prime Minister John Howard, uh, said uh, to us that you know this is a paramount concern. And then, and then Malcolm Turnbull comes out and says, "I care about more about religious freedom than I do about gay marriage." Um, was that just to appease the people who were sitting on the fence? I probably think so. And then Tony Abbott also came out from the no side and said that freedom shouldn't be an afterthought. And now, quite frankly, I, I agree with Tony here because you can't, you know, pass a bill and then say, oh, we'll put some amendments or some provisions in next year to ensure that conscientious objectors, uh, Christians, Jews, Muslims, uh, can teach their kids essentially um, whatever they want, you know, if, ma if marriage is between a man and a woman or to take them out of safe schools or all of this stuff that, that's been, that, that was in the uh, um, James Patterson bill is all being taken away. And, and religious freedom, as Tony Abbott said, shouldn't be an afterthought, but now it is an afterthought, uh, which is disgusting. You, you can't uh, do something so major to, to change the fabric of civil society and not have, uh, you know, freedoms enshrined in legislation because uh, it's wrong. And I don't know if you're an atheist or a Christian, Tim, I certainly know that you are for uh, same-sex marriage, but I, I'd just like you to think for a moment, how would you feel if your liberty uh, to express your opinion was stripped from you and made illegal? This is really quite a serious thing that is happening here, and a lot of people uh, are just, um, quite frankly, oblivi you know, oblivious to the matter. Uh, I think. Well, I'm hopeful that we, you know, will get the free speech protections, and that was the one of the first uh, uh, amendments that you know Brandis uh, said he would move. But like I said, there is this, you know, pressure to uh, get it done by Christmas. Definitely. Uh, uh, it looks like that bakers are going to be forced to, you know, bake the cake. That's the, uh, you know, there's going to be uh, no no exemptions uh, there. Uh, and 
it, it's, it seems like that conservatives are almost, you know, intimidated by the size of this, this uh, result, uh, especially in their, their own electorates. And uh, it almost seems like that Turnbull now, he, he feels that, you know, he's finally on the front foot. You saw him immediately after the announcement, you know, come out and said, you know, this is, you know, such a great result. We've got to get up on and do this. I think it was his, Probably he thought his his best day as prime minister for a while. He's had to deal with uh, train wreck after train wreck. So it's it's it's. I think I think the well, the, at least the conservatives in uh, Canberra. They're yeah, they've they've certainly taken a a, a backward step and. Uh, you know, it's it. It seems like they they really just want to you know get this done, move and move on, and you know we we'll, we might have a discussion about these things later. That is, it's disgusting, really. Turnbull has still lost twenty three twenty three news polls in a row, and he's he's hopping and dancing around here, you know, like he saved the world from Armageddon. He hasn't really done anything. He's been an, an ineffective and hopeless prime minister. Uh, he hasn't done anything. He has no vision. Um, likewise with the deputy prime minister, Julia Gillard. You don't know what either of them stand for. They're just um, power-hungry uh, members of the intelligentsia uh, who are, you know, just there for the thrill of the ride. They don't have any convictions. They don't have any values. All they're there is to be is popular. Now, what Turnbull has done, he shouldn't be so proud of himself because he hasn't guaranteed the uh, fifty-two uh, percent of the community who are Christian uh, their religious uh, liberties. He hasn't protected the majority of Australians um, to have uh, their religious freedom. Uh, which is disgusting in my eyes. But uh, interestingly enough, he's gallant about it and he doesn't really seem to care one iota about the um, religious freedom aspect. Previously said he was, uh, it was much more important for him to have religious freedom than to have gay marriage. But now it just seems to have, have gay marriage before Christmas because do you know what would be a really sweet Christmas present for me at Kirribilli House? It would be to have a win at the news poll. That's all Malcolm Turnbull cares about. He's phony, he's fake, and he's just there uh, for some sense of uh, self, you know, uh, promotion, and and he just wants to get on the front foot. I don't really think he even cares about gay marriage, to be honest with you. Uh, what does this also mean for the the no side now? Because uh, there's you know there's a lot of um, you know news commentary trying to you know sink the boot into you know the the Christian lobby and say you know look at look how much of a you know minority uh, you are now. Does do do they still you know fight on because? Um, I felt that they made a mistake, uh, you know, by, you know, putting issues such as, you know, as, uh, safe schools and gender fluidity into the, uh, into the mix, because now, uh, you know, the uh, LGBT lobby, they're going to say, ha, ah, well, this is a mandate for, you know, safe schools and uh, all this other stuff, which I, I still think that, um, you know, pro programs such as this and other excesses of the LGBT agenda can be opposed, but it's it's certainly going to be harder. Yeah, I, I think um, personally, uh, um, I am a member of the Australian Christian Lobby. Uh, I don't agree with all of their uh, agenda, nor nor should anyone agree with. I the reason why I joined is because I want religious liberties protected. I'm not for everything they do. Uh, necessarily, maybe only a handful of things they do, but definitely I'm really for safeguarding uh, religious liberty. And I think that, in a sense, uh, they have made it harder for people to obtain uh, religious liberty here uh, because they've conflated, uh, say, uh, same-sex marriage with safe schools. Now, these are safe schools is terrible, don't get me wrong, but I don't think... Um, the, I think it was a bit of a nefarious connection to say that uh, you legalise same-sex marriage, it gives safe schools legal authority. I think that put a lot of people off. And now all that I think it's done is made it harder for parents to eventually have the opportunity, eventually have the freedom 
to opt out of uh, a radical um, you know, sexual sex education program that doesn't really, uh, if we'll be honest here, uh, it, it's not really on, on the same level of, of what many Australians think. Many Australians don't think that gender is a choice. Uh, many Australians are smart yet pragmatic people that realise that, you know, basic science and biology do exist and that gender is not a choice. And now I think that doing this, uh, alleviating that, you know, conflating the two eventually will make it harder to get rid of uh, programs like Safe Schools in the future. And I do agree with your analysis on that point. Um, but yes, uh, we all need to be careful. Uh, and as Benjamin Franklin said, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. And uh, I think that that's what we need here to make sure that this same-sex marriage bill, if and when it is passed, which I think is highly probable, uh, is not uh, a Trojan horse uh, for totalitarianism or uh, the radical gender ideology that might be squeezed through with it. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.